Welcome, to the Corp Vault channel. In this video we will discuss, how to configure NDMP, or NAS Income Vault. Please, like, share, comment or suggest. Subscribe for more videos, and, you can follow us on Instagram. In this video, we will configure NetApp NDMP server. Before you proceed please go through, NDMP system requirements, license requirements, supported features, and supported vendors, using the links provided in the video description. Let's discuss how the connection is made between ComServe, Media Agent, NetApp, and Tape Library. This configuration is most general, but might vary from customer to customer. Communication between ComServe, Media Agent, and NetApp happen using CVD process. Media Agent is connected over SAN to the tape library, via switch. NetApp is also connected to the tape library over SAN, via switch. In some environments, you might see the tape library is direct connected to NetApp, without switch. In our example, the Media Agent hold only index cache, or index information related to NetApp backups. The actual data is directly sent over SAN, from NetApp to the tape library. Sharing the tape library between the media agent, and NetApp, helps troubleshoot library issues easily. Using this way, you can keep the library handler to the media agent, and NetApp will be just the user for the tape library. Let's proceed with NDMP client configuration. Right click on the client computers. Select, New Client. Add New Client Window. Under File System, select, NAS Network Share option. Add NAS Network Share Client Window. General tab. Select NDMP, to create a NDMP client. Select Network Share, to create a Network Share client. Under Network Share you have two choices. Choose Windows. To create a network share client with Windows File System Agent. Choose Unix. To create a network share client with Linux File System Agent. Under Client Name, type the name of the new NDMP server, or network share client name, which will be seen under Client Computers, Income Cell Browser. Under Host Name, type the fully qualified domain name of the client. NDMP Properties tab. And DMP server host name is the fully qualified name of the file server. And DMP login enter the user account through which the file server can be accessed for backup and recovery. Under and DMP password, specify the password of the user account used to access the file server. Change password when selected enables the NDMP password field, which can be used to provide new password for the file server login account. Listen port, specifies the default computer port number assignment, default port value is 10,000. Click, detect. Using the provided user account, the NDMP file server is connected, and required information is fetched. Vendor, displays the vendor name of the NDMP server. Firmware revision, displays the current software version of the NDMP server. Detect media agent. Use this option to select a media agent to use for communicating with the file server. If you leave this option blank, the ComServe host will communicate directly with the file server. You must select this option if the file server does not have connectivity to the ComServe host. Time zone, displays the current time zone setting of the NDMP client. Supported features, shows the available and enabled features on the NDMP client. Once done, click OK. The NDMP client is successfully configured, and visible in the client computers. Expand or double-click NDMP. Expand or double-click default backup set. We see default sub-client. You can create multiple sub-clients, that is, one sub-client for each volume, if needed. Double-click to open properties. Sub-client properties are default. General tab. 
Client name displays the name of the NDMP client. A data agent displays the name of the agent used. Backup set displays the name of the backup set to which this subclient belongs. Subclient name displays the name of this subclient. This is the default subclient, but you can modify the name of the subclient if needed. Use the description field to enter a description about the entity. This description can include information about the change ticket, incident ticket, cautionary notes, etc. Content tab Contents of subclient displays a list of paths of data. Special character forward slash indicate to backup all data on the filer. Click to browse for new content that you want to add to this subclient. This would be the live browse on the NIT app filer. Select the content to be backup. Once done, click Add. To delete the content, select the path from the contents of subclient and click Delete. Backup content path. Add is used to add the data that you specified in backup content path to the contents of subclient list. Case sensitive specifies whether the content paths will be case sensitive. Selecting this option will cause the system to recognize the difference between uppercase and lowercase characters in the content path. Advanced Options tab Number of data readers You can specify the number of simultaneous backup data streams allowed for this subclient. For the best performance, set the number of data readers no higher than the number of physical drives that hold the subclient's data, except for specialized hardware such as RAID. If the Allow Multiple Data Readers within a Content Path option is selected, set the number of data readers to 4. Please also go through these considerations. Exclude from SLA and Strike Counts. Select this option to exclude the subclient from the SLA, Service Level Agreement, Calculation, and the Client Strike Calculation for the Worldwide Dashboard. Comcell Dashboard, SLA Report, and Client Strike Count Report. If this option is not selected, then the subclient is included in these calculations. Ignore Strikes Before. When selected, allows you to configure the cutoff date for counting strikes. Any strikes that occurred prior to the date you specify will not be counted in the strike calculation for the Worldwide Dashboard, Comcell Dashboard, and Strike Count Report. Catalog Additional File and System Attributes allows you to enable collection of files and system attributes so that you can create custom reports or see additional information in the file level analytics report. Collected data includes created time, access time, group ID, user ID, and file mode. Filters tab Include global filters, displays a list of options for enabling or disabling global filters. Choose appropriate one from the list. Exclude these files, folders, patterns. Select Add to manually add a path for the data to be excluded from backup operations. To remove an entry, select the entry and click Delete to remove the entry. Pre Post Process tab. Pre Backup Process. Enter a path of the backup process to run before the backup phase. Please note. If there are spaces in the name and path, provide a string beginning with an opening quotation mark and ends with a closing quotation mark. Post backup process. Enter a path of the backup process to run after the backup phase. Do take care of the spaces by providing an opening quotation mark and ending with a closing quotation mark. Run post backup process for all attempts specifies whether this process will execute for all attempts to run the phase. Selecting this option will execute the post backup process even for situations where the job phase is interrupted, suspended, or fails. Run as displays the user account used to run the pre-processes and post processes. Select change if you want to add or modify the user account that has permission to run the pre-post processes. Security tab. This window helps to identify the users, user groups, and roles associated with the subclient. You can add, edit, or remove security associations for the subclient. Include inherited associations, helps lists, 
all of the inherited security associations that affect the sub-client. Storage device tab. Data storage policy. Select a storage policy from the list to which backups will be associated. Use data paths option to view or modify the data paths associated with the primary storage policy copy of the selected storage policy. This would help to route the data between data paths when you see issues with a particular data path. Incremental storage policy is not applicable to this kind of backups. Use create storage policy to launch the create a storage policy wizard for creating a new storage policy. Data transfer option tab. Software compression. Software compression on client and media agent is not applicable as most often this kind of backups run over SAN, that is, data travels directly from the NDMP file server, to the storage device. By default, use storage policy settings is selected. If the backup run over SAN, then it is better to turn off software compression. Resource tuning is not applicable for NDMP backups. Activity control tab. By default, enable backup is checked. If you clear this option then backups will be started as per schedule, but a fail to start, with reason data management activity is disabled. When you clear this option, you get another option to enable backup after a delay. You can choose the option to select a specific date and time, when the backup activity can be enabled. Encryption tab. By default, none is selected, which means no encryption will take place during backup operations. Media only, media agent side. This option is not available for NDMP backups. Network and media, agent side. When selected, data is encrypted before transmission, and is stored encrypted on the media. During restore operations, data is decrypted by the client. Network only, agent encrypts, media agent decrypts. When selected, Data is encrypted for transmission and then decrypted prior to storage on the media. During restore operations, data is encrypted by the media agent and then decrypted in the client. IntelliSnap Operations tab. By default, IntelliSnap option is enabled, but you need to configure for use. If you wish then you can disable this option. Available Snap Engines, lists the available snapshot engine vendors. Click the pull-down arrow to select a snapshot engine vendor, and choose the one that you want to use. Manage Array will pull the array management window, where you can add or modify access information for an array. Proxy M8 tab. You can configure additional media agents as proxies, for NDMP backup and restore operations. Select the proxy media agent from, available proxy media agents, and move to selected proxy media agents, using these available options. Index tab. Index server. The index server is a logical entity. The index server uses the index store, installed on a client to perform indexing, search, and analytics operations on the data in your ComCell environment. You can pick one from the list, if configured and available. Once done, click OK. The sub-client should configure successfully. Let's review the properties of NDMP. These are the available menu options. Select Properties. NDMP Properties. General tab. Client name displays the name of the NDMP file server. IData agent displays the name of the agent. Install date. Displays the date on which the agent was installed, or upgraded on the NDMP client. User account, displays the NDMP account, used by the system to connect to the NDMP file server. NDMP properties, when clicked, takes you to the NDMP server properties dialog box. If you wish you can make changes from here as well. Version tab. This tab shows the Comvault version used by the NDMP. Security tab. As discussed before, this window helps to identify the users, user groups, and roles associated with this client. Activity control tab. You can enable or disable the backup and recovery operations from this level. 
disabling from this level will affect all the subclients created under the default backup set. When you clear any of these options, you get another option to enable the respective option after a delay. You can choose that option to select a specific date and time when the respective activity can be enabled. Proxy M8 tab. As discussed before, you can configure additional media agents as proxies for NDMP backup and restore operations. Once done, click OK or Cancel. Let's review NDMP client properties. Right click on the NDMP client. These are the available menu options. Select Properties and DMP Client Computer Properties. General tab. Name is the client name to uniquely identify the client in the ComCell environment. Display name is the name of the client as it is displayed in the ComCell browser. Host name is fully qualified domain name of the NDMP client. Edit display name is used to change the display name for the client. Edit is used to update the client name, the host name, and the ComServe host name for the client. OS displays the operating system that runs on the NDMP client. Time information. Override. When selected, you can set the time zone of the client computer. Overriding the local client time zone is helpful. If your client is a pseudo client, after the time zone is set, the backup schedules for the client on the new time zone. If the override checkbox is cleared, the client services are automatically restarted, and the local time zone of the client computer is displayed. Client type. When selected, it allows you to specify a NetApp client as a cluster file server, a physical file server, or a storage virtual machine. Physical file server or cluster file server. This option is available for unassigned clients. When selected, enables the client as the controller of a cluster interface. Storage virtual machine. When selected, enables the client as a storage virtual machine that is part of a cluster interface. Description. Enter a description about the client in text or HTML format. Security tab. Privacy. Prevent administrators from viewing or downloading your data. This option is not available for this agent, but it usually helps to prevent users and administrators who are not client owners from seeing the data on the client. Only a client owner may access data protected on the client. We have already discussed the Associations tab. Owners tab, client level only, shows the users or user groups who can access this client computer through the ComCell console, and who can run web console browse and restore operations on this client. Groups tab. This window helps to associate a client to a client group, or remove the association from a group. Show only selected will show only the selected client computer group for this client. Activity control tab. We have already discussed how these options work, hence skipping the tab. Order tab. This tab helps to create notes. For example, you can keep notes about maintenance or software installations. Ordered history lists all of the notes previously entered about the client, including the user who entered the note, the severity, and the date that the note was entered. Use the new audit button to open the new audit dialog box. Click Advanced. General tab. We discussed IntelliSnap on default subclient, hence skipping it. Job configuration tab. Job priority. You can set the priority of the job submitted by this client. Default value is 6. Valid values range from 0 through 9, where 0 has the highest priority. In the three digit job priority number, this value holds the second position. Q jobs if other conflicting jobs are active. If enabled, then the jobs start in a queued state. If they conflict with other running jobs, after the conflicting jobs are completed, the queued jobs resume automatically. This option also can be set at a global level using job management from control panel. Enable job throttle is not applicable for this client. Maximum number of parallel data transfer operations. It is the number of streams that the software allocates for backup for the client. This option honors stream throttling at the client level.
When you set this option, the resource manager verifies that the total number of streams associated with a client at any point of time does not exceed the set value, irrespective of the setting defined at the sub-client level. If all streams are in use, then the new jobs remain in the waiting state until all streams are available. Change status of all data interface pairs to this option sets the status of all defined interface pairs on this client to either enabled or disabled. Once option enabled, select a status from the list. Please note, you need to manually push of network configuration after changing to put into effect. Data interface pairs lists data interface pairs configured for the client. You can view which data interface pair is active or disabled. You can add, delete, and edit the data interface pairs using these options. We will try creating a separate video for this topic. Encryption tab. Please pay attention to the notes. By default, Use Storage Policy Settings option is selected. Encrypt data with following settings. Data encryption algorithm displays the ciphers available for data transfer. Key length displays the key lengths available for the selected cipher. Note that the key length displayed will vary according to the selected cipher. Direct media access, external restore tools. Via media password means data encryption keys are stored scrambled on the media. No access means data encryption keys are not stored on the media. If you wish not to encrypt data, then select Do Not Encrypt. Content Indexing tab. We can associate this client to a content indexing policy by enabling content indexing. When enabled, the content indexing engine will content index the data associated with the client. If content indexing is enabled in the storage policies associated with the sub clients within the client, additional settings tab. In Simple it is the place where you set the registry keys provided by Comvault for the client. KPIs tab. We can configure key performance indicators that appears in reports. Exclude from SLA and strike counts. When this option is selected, the client is excluded from the service level agreement, SLA calculation and the client strike calculation for the worldwide dashboard, Comcell dashboard, SLA report, and client strike count report. When this option is cleared, the client is included in these calculations. Copy redundancy allows you to specify the minimum number of copies required to meet the copy redundancy SLA that is calculated in the copy redundancy SLA report. Maximum allowed auxiliary copy fallen behind. It is the maximum time interval that auxiliary copy can fall behind before it goes into warning or critical status in the fallen behind secondary copies tile in the health report. Recovery point objective, RPO. You can specify the number of days, hours, and minutes that make up the RPO. The RPO is the maximum number of hours that data can be lost during a service disruption. These settings will be used to calculate the data that appears in the recovery point and time report. Recovery time objective, RTO. You can specify the number of days, hours, and minutes that make up the RTO. The RTO is the maximum amount of time allowed to restore after a service disruption. The results appear in the recovery point and time report. Once done, click OK. Let's discuss about Snap Mirror to Tape. Snap Mirror to Tape are image backups. Image backup allows you to perform a backup of an entire volume to media. One significant advantage of this is, restoring from an image backup provides faster volume recovery than a file based restore. Right click on NDMP. All tasks. Select, create new backup set. Create new backup set window. Client computer displays the name of the NDMP client on which this backup set is found. iData agent displays the name of the iData agent to which this backup set belongs. Give a name of your choice in new backup set name field. Select a storage policy from the list. Make this the default backup set. Specifies whether the selected backup set is the default or a user defined backup.
Selecting this option asserts this backup set as the default. Image Backup Set specifies whether the selected backup set should be backed up using the image backup feature. Please note, it is not possible to perform file level restores from an image backup. Only entire volumes can be restored from an image backup. Once done, click OK. On the pop-up, Backup Schedule Windows, select Desired Option, and click OK. Snap Mirror to Tape Backup Set created successfully. Right-click on the Backup Set. Select Properties. Backup Set Properties Window. General tab. We have already discussed all these options. You can make changes if needed. Security tab. We have already discussed this tab. Once done, click OK or Cancel. Double click Backup Set to view the sub client. Right click on the sub client. Select Properties. This window is same as default Backup Set sub client. Content tab. Click Browse. Here you see all the volumes listed that are on the NDMP file server. All other tabs remain same as we discussed before. We will end this video here. Do subscribe for more videos, if not already done so. Do subscribe for more videos.